two, one. Apple Founded by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Dwayne on April 1, 1976, it is one of the most popular and influential tech companies of all time. It was the first company to be valued at over $1 trillion in August 2018. I want to thank the user Android from IcebergCharts.com, as well as Sam Henry Gold, UExperience0904, UEffectiveLuck3514, and everyone that contributed for helping me to make this video. Hi, my name is Spitzov, and this company has a lot of interesting details and products. If you liked the video, you can subscribe or leave a comment. I always heard them. Welcome and now follow me deeper into the Apple Iceberg. Apple Products the Apple II brought the concept of a computer to mass adoption with the term of a personal computer. Keep in mind that in that time, computers were very expensive and targeted at big corporations. The Macintosh computers were one of the first ones to introduce the concept of a graphical user interface or GUI. This is the standard nowadays, but back then, it was completely revolutionary. The reviews were mixed as it had poor performance, a decision caused by trying to lower the cost as much as possible. Jobs was fired, but returned later to the company in 1997 with the acquisition of Next. The next year, Apple introduced the first iMac, an all-in-one computer with a very interesting translucent design, USB ports, and internet connectivity via Ethernet. This made it a complete success. Currently, it has other models like the Mac Mini, which is only the computer but without any display nor peripherals but cheaper, the Mac Studio that is like a Mac Mini but with better specs and higher price, the Mac Pro that also is the bird computer but this one is modular and the most expensive and powerful one in the iMac Pro that's a better version of the all-in-one iMac. In 1999, the company introduced the iBook, a laptop that later became the MacBook, with a more powerful variation called the MacBook Pro and a cheaper and lighter model called the MacBook Air. In 2000, Apple bought the SoundJam MP audio player software, which would be an essential tool for the success of their next product the iPod, that also has variations, being these the iPad Shuffle that had no screen, the iPad Nano, a smaller version of the original one, and the iPod Touch that only has a home button and you can install apps to it. All of these products led to the creation of Apple's biggest product, the iPhone. It combined a phone, a media player, and a web browser, but nowadays, 14 iterations later, it can be described as more of a portable computer, because the creation of the App Store expanded a lot its capabilities, allowing you to watch videos, play games, and even edit media. The Apple TV was also introduced, that is a device that lets you stream content and play compatible games. In 2010, Apple unveiled the iPad, a larger brother to the iPhone that was also compatible with its apps. There are also other models, like the iPad Pro with better specs and larger size, the iPad Mini, which is smaller and cheaper, and the iPad Air that is lighter. In 2014, Apple announced the Apple Watch that it was a complement to the iPhone and also a fitness tracker. This one also has other versions like a cheaper Apple Watch SE or the Apple Watch Ultra that has better tracking and resistance. In 2016, alongside the iPhone 7, Apple released the AirPods, a pair of Bluetooth earbuds successors of the EarPods. 
the AirPods Pro are a revision that feature noise cancellation and the AirPods Max are more expensive over the ear headphones. In 2017, the HomePod was announced. It is a smart speaker that lets you listen to music, podcasts, and use Siri, its voice assistant. It was very expensive, so it didn't sell that well, leading to the creation of a cheaper and colorful version called the HomePod Mini. The latest Apple product is the AirTag, a tracking device that works with the Find My network that gets location reports from Apple devices, being very effective in places where people with iPhones or the majority. Apple CEOs Steve Jobs was the first Apple CEO, but it was not the only one, even though definitely the most influential one. After hiring John Scully, it was decided that Jobs should be let go, due to him making very expensive decisions, making Scully the next CEO. He worked 10 years in Apple, but was succeeded by Michael Spindler, that lasted 3 years in the company, followed by Jill Emilio, who thought of bringing Jobs back to the company, only lasting a year as CEO. After Jobs' death, Tim Cook became CEO of Apple, starting a new era for the company. Apple Memes There are a lot of memes that are directly or indirectly related to Apple and its products. I'm going to mention them briefly because they are a lot. One of the most recent ones is the 1984 Macintosh ad meme. The context behind it is that there is a novel called 1984 which tells us the story of a dystopian dictatorship where everyone is brainwashed. Kind of like our world, but worse. Apple released this ad for the Macintosh that became iconic, implying that 1984, as the novel tells us, wouldn't happen in our world because of Apple's innovation with the Mac. Nowadays, this commercial is used in memes to represent satirical forbidden situations, like this meme that says, <laughs> Sir, those toilets are for display purposes only, implying that there is no freedom in comparing it to the 1984 novel. Another popular meme is that Apple has overpriced products, which is a fact. People say that when you buy an Apple product, you pay the quote, Apple tax. Some people justify the price of its products because they claim that they are high because they don't sell your data, think that I don't really believe. <laughs> the best example of overpriced products is the Display XDR stand that costs alone a thousand dollars. Yes, just the stand. <laughs> A frequent complaint is that this company doesn't innovate anymore, something that I think we've all have noticed. Practically, the iPhone has remained the same since the iPhone X, with just a couple of new features. Along with the lack of innovation memes, there is the usual meme that complains not only about Apple not innovating, but about Apple removing features, like the headphone jack. The MacBook ports, which are back now but only for the Pro models, the charging brick removal, and the possible removal of a charging port. A meme format that I think was exaggerated is the one that appeared when the iPhone 4, 5, and 6 came out, that were slightly bigger. Considering how big Android phones and the iPhone Pro Max are now, I would love to have an iPhone with a big iPhone 6 size, just without bezels. One that was also iconic and popular back in the day was what happened if you asked Siri, the iPhone's voice assistant, what is 0 divided by 0? Who replies? Imagine that you have 0 cookies and you split them evenly among 0 friends. How many cookies does each person get? See. It doesn't make sense, and Cookie Monster is sad that there are no cookies, and you are sad that you have no friends, like me. 
A stereotype that iPhones have is that they have a poor battery life. This was real a couple of years ago, but right now, iPhones are probably the phones with best battery life in the market due to their optimization and lack of Google Play services, but to this day, this reputation still exists and there are tons of memes to prove it. The last meme we're going to mention is the one caused by the NFT lover Donald Trump that also happens to have been a US president. In one of his conferences, he referred to Tim Cook as Tim Apple, probably because he forgot his name. Tim Apple didn't seem so bothered by this, changing his Twitter name to what Donald called him. Events Every year, the Cupertino's company makes at least one public event, but generally there are multiple of them each year. One that takes place each summer is the Worldwide Developers Conference or WWDC, where new versions of iOS, macOS, and watchOS are announced, and sometimes there are hardware announcements too. There is also the classic September Apple event where new iPhones are introduced. It is common to have more events or keynotes to introduce other devices like iPads and MacBooks. Apple Park this is the name given to the current headquarters for Apple and where most events take place. Apple Stores it is said that part of Apple's marketing strategy is to build a lot of Apple stores instead of using traditional ads. That's why you always have an Apple store in every mall and near you, where you can try the new products and acquire them. Designed by Apple in California this is a very common phrase in Apple products. It has become so iconic that it is also the name of a very expensive book where the company describes the process of making their devices. Product Red this is a special red version of products that became a tradition. When you buy one of these, you are donating to the fight against diseases like AIDS or COVID. Apple's operating systems and older versions. So I'm just going to describe all of these in one sentence, starting with the most popular one, iOS, originally called iPhone OS. This is the operating system that iPhones and iPod touches run, and the one that iPads also ran before having a dedicated OS. What most people didn't know is that originally this was described as quote OS X. The truth is that it's a Unix-like system based on Darwin, a type of BSD, with a hybrid Shinu kernel. Surprisingly, both Darwin and Shinu are open source, but iOS isn't. iPhone OS 1 included a multi-touch based interface with apps based on common utilities. iPhone OS 2 introduced the App Store that allowed you to download apps for your phone iPhone OS 3 added a system-wide clipboard to copy and paste stuff and allowed you to record videos with the iPhone 3GS. The now called iOS 4 supported custom wallpapers and multitasking. The fifth major release, iOS 5, added the notification center. iOS 6 replaced Google Maps with Apple Maps. With iOS 7, we saw a major redesign, moving from a skeuomorphic design to a flat design, along with the introduction of the control center. iOS 8 synced your iPhone and other Apple devices with the feature called continuity, and the health app was added. The Apple News app was included with iOS 9 as well as a blue light filter mode called Night Shift. iOS 10 used the new home app to manage your smart devices, and the lock screen was improved. The lock screen and notification center were combined on iOS 11 and the control center was redesigned. Thanks to iOS 12, you can now see your screen time and perform quick actions with the Shortcuts app. 
In iOS 13, a system-wide dark mode was included, and the annoying volume pop-up was also redesigned. With iOS 14, you're getting a new app library with all your apps, as well as home screen widgets iOS 15 introduced focus modes that adapt your home screen and notifications according to the mode you're in. The latest version is iOS 16 that redesigned the lock screen to allow more customization and always on display. iPadOS is a fork of iOS that takes full advantage of all the screen real estate and power of the iPads, introducing exclusive features being separated of the iOS branch in 2019 with the release of iPadOS 13.1 that had more rows and columns of apps on the home screen and featured a new multitasking system. iOS 14 now had the ability to mount encrypted external drives. Other interfaces like Series are now compact, allowing you to interact with the content in the background. For some reason, the widgets couldn't be placed on the home screen until the release of iOS 15 that also introduced the app library from iOS. In iPadOS 16, you now have the Weather app and a new window managing feature known as Stage Manager. Moving on to Apple's desktop operating system, macOS, also being proprietary but based on the open source Chinook kernel and next up, also falling in the category of BSD and the successor of the classic Mac OS. I'm just going to mention the versions of OS X because if I also mention the versions of next up and system or classic Mac OS, it's gonna take a long time. Well, starting with OS X Cheetah in 2001, named after being the 10th release of the Mac OS, this first version introduced the dock and the terminal, but was met with pretty harsh reviews as it was slow and incomplete, but some other praised this move as the Mac OS needed a big overhaul. It had a few apps, but it was a completely new code base. Mac OS 10.1 Puma improved the overhaul performance and added missing features like DVD playback support. Its successor, 10.2 Jaguar, added cups, MPEG-4 support in QuickTime, etc. macOS 10.3 Panther replaced Internet Explorer with Safari. The Finder had a redesign and more features, as well as introducing the feature Expose that shows all your windows as thumbnails. Next, we have macOS 10.4 Tiger that now included Spotlight, a new version of Safari, and Dashboard, a panel with multiple widgets. The sixth major release, 10.5 Leopard, had a redesigned dock with stacks and a tweaked menu bar. The following version, 10.6 Snow Leopard, had almost no new features because they wanted to focus on improving what they already had with better performance and efficiency. OS X Lion introduced the Mac App Store, where you can download your software and updates. 10.8 Mountain Lion gained a new malware blocking system called Gatekeeper and brought the notification center to the desktop OS. OS 10.9 Mavericks was the beginning of a transition to another age of macOS as it dropped the big cat codenames, became free and removed some skeuomorphic elements from the UI. The big redesign happened in OS 10.10 Yosemite that adopted a flat design with blur in some areas to match with iOS 7. OS 10.11 El Capitan added the option to split windows by holding on the green button and made it easier to find your cursor by shaking it, which would cause it to grow. macOS 10.12 Sierra brings Siri to your Mac 
as well as Night Shift. The next release, macOS 10.13 High Sierra, added support for Apple's graphic API Metal 2 and set the Apple file system as the default file system. macOS 10.14 Mojave added a dark mode and accent colors and got iOS apps like News, Stocks, Voice Memos, and Home. 10.15 Catalina was controversial because it removed compatibility with 32-bit apps and replaced Bash with the C shell. macOS 11 Big Sur finally dropped the 10.x naming scheme, making notable the big changes the update had, like redesigned UI, the control center, and support for ARM processors. The 18th major release was macOS 12 Monterey that ported shortcuts and test flight to the Mac. The latest macOS release is 13 Ventura and added weather and clock for the Mac in a new window managing feature called Stage Manager. Now, let's mention the Apple Watch's operating system, WatchOS. It is based on iOS and can run apps made with the WatchKit API. The first version showed us its different home screen that has floating circular app icons that can be zoomed in and out with the digital crown. Its second version included now support for third-party apps. The third release lets you add your favorite apps to the dock, switch to another watch face with a swipe and swiping up brings the control center. In watchOS 4, you can find a redesigned music app, toggles for the flashlight and safety light in the control center, and a news app. WatchOS 5 added the walkie-talkie feature that lets you communicate between Apple Watches instantly. In the next version, a calculator and the App Store were included. In 2020, WatchOS 7 comes out with hand washing and sleep tracking. WatchOS 8 had improvements to the health monitoring visuals, and apps. The latest version is watchOS 9 and has a Compass app and a new low power mode. Based on iOS, the last and least known Apple operating system left for us to cover is tvOS. The initial release was in 2015 and called tvOS 9. It had a transparent and light UI with support for the new remote that controls everything with a trackpad. Interestingly, it seems that it was the first Apple OS to implement a tuggable dark mode back in 2016 with tvOS 10. In tvOS 11, support for 4K output was included. The following year, tvOS 12 came out with support for third-party remotes. A UI overhaul was made in tvOS 13, adding rounder corners and full-screen video previews. Picture-in-picture -picture for third-party apps was introduced with tvOS 14, as well as a redesigned control center. tvOS 15 can now be controlled via a HomePod and has a redesigned player. Finally, tvOS 16 redesigned the Siri UI and supports now the Switches Joy-Cons and Pro Controllers. Tier 2 Epic Games vs Apple It all started when Epic Games in 2020 had code inside of the iOS and Android versions of Fortnite that would allow users to directly buy V-Bucks with a discounted price, bypassing the payment methods of these platforms and thus avoiding paying Apple and Google the 30% cut of microtransactions. When Epic enabled this code and the option was visible to users, it took a couple of hours for these companies to remove Fortnite from their stores, as this practice violated the terms of service. Then, Epic Games sued Apple and Google 
for anti-competitive behavior. Judge Rogers concluded that Apple didn't have a monopoly, but rather was part of a duopoly along with Google, and decided that Epic Games must pay Apple $3.6 million. Fortnite won't be able to return to iOS and macOS until 2026, approximately. Apple Controversies Mentioning Apple itself is controversial, but there have been some well-justified controversies this company has been involved in. The one we hear about every year is that they copy features from other phones or operating systems. For example, widgets on the home screen are a feature that Android has had for years, as well as always on display. However, I think that this is not really a bad thing companies copying each other in most cases is a good thing, except when they remove features and in the Android world, we've copied a lot of stuff from Apple too. When Apple Maps replaced Google Maps, everything was chaotic, as it sucked. It was so bad that the Australian police recommended not using it, as it could cause accidents, and Cupertino's company had to apologize. Each iPhone release is controversial, but there are some that became very criticized, like AntennaGate, that referred to what happened if you held the iPhone 4 and your left hand, causing it to block the antennas and starting to lose signal. The iPhone 6 had bendgate, referring to the fact that it was also very prone to bending so hard that it could break. MacBooks also had a lot of issues, mainly before the M1 transition. They got really hot, causing them to throttle, and their butterfly keyboards stopped working quickly. In 2017, Apple started slowing down iPhones with updates. Of course, everyone got outraged, because they were clearly doing this on purpose to get you to buy another phone. According to the company, they were doing this to preserve the battery life of older phones, which would make sense, but the first reason also makes sense. I think that they added a setting in iOS that lets you toggle this behavior, but that's just as far as I know. One of the more recent controversies is the one caused after Apple stated that they would start scanning iCloud photos of their users to try to find illegal content by comparing the hashes. Obviously, this is a privacy invasive feature, so people complained on the internet and Apple stopped it. The hashtag get the message controversy consists of demanding Apple to add MMS support to iMessage, as this creates a bad experience for Android users. Finally, the stage manager controversy refers to Apple wanting to release the feature on iPads with a lot of bugs and only available for the M1 iPads. John Appleseed this is a name placeholder for Apple demos, but according to TechRadar, there could be more context behind, as it is the pseudonym of Mike Markula, a key part of Apple's success, and also is a reference to the real-life John Appleseed, who introduced apple trees to Ohio and other states. Apple decided to not support Adobe Flash. A shocking Apple decision for many was to not support Adobe Flash on their mobile devices, as it was the most popular technology for web development. The reason they gave was that all Adobe products are proprietary, kind of ironic, but well, <laughs> Flash drained a lot of battery life and it wasn't optimized for touchscreens. It also was just getting pretty outdated. I think Apple was right, and not supporting Flash basically led to its death, now replaced by HTML5. Microsoft saved Apple in the 90s Regardless of the iconic rivalry between Apple and Microsoft, it is said that the latter actually saved Apple in the 90s from going bankrupt by investing $150 million on it. 
Part of the deal was that Microsoft would port Internet Explorer and Office to the Macs, a move that was very controversial. However, in an article by ZDNet, it is explained that the investment was actually a payment due to the result of a lawsuit and Microsoft's contributions happened because both companies would cross-license older existing and new patents for the next five years. This would be what brought Office and Internet Explorer to the Mac and QuickTime to Windows. Jailbreak this is a process that lets you install third-party apps and have other features, but at the cost of less security and no warranty. It comes from the metaphor of iOS being so locked down that it is compared to a jail, and by performing the process, you break free from the limitations of the jail. There is a big debate of whether doing this is legal or not, but it varies depending the country. The first time this was done was back in 2007, just a couple of days after the original iPhone's release, achieving to add custom ringtones, wallpapers, and more. Apple has made it harder to jailbreak a device, being now only possible on older versions of iOS. Us, but as I have said, the modern community always finds a way. Time and commercials If you look closely to the time that iPhones always have in commercials, you'll see that it is 0941, which was the time when the first iPhone was shown to the public. Apple Watches have a similar tradition, but they show 1009, which is one minute earlier than the standard for other watches. Nobody really knows why, but it is speculated that it is because Apple wanted to make the watch look different in commercials, like if it was a ahead of its competitors or something like that. Another theory is that it looks more symmetrical, but there is not an official reason. Apple fails Apple has had a couple of fails. We've already seen the Apple Maps one, but another well-known fail is the one that happened when Craig Federighi tried to unlock an iPhone X in a presentation. It didn't recognize his face and locked itself. <laughs> Apple replied to this, stating that it didn't misbehave, but that rather worked as expected, as people were trying to use it before the presentation, but it didn't recognize anyone's faces asking for the passcode. Face ID does not get reactivated unless you unlock the iPhone successfully, so that would make sense. A more recent fail was caused by the iPhone 14's new crash detection feature that calls emergency services when someone is riding a roller coaster because it thinks it's a car crash. To be fair, both situations are similar, a lot of movement, noise, and speed. Now another one that wasn't committed by Apple, but it is still related to one of its products, tells us the story of a Russian soldier who found an abandoned MacBook. He wanted it, so he stored it into his chest armor pocket, replacing the ballistic plate designed to stop bullets. You can guess how the story ends, <laughs> as it received a Darwin Award, an ironic award for those that quote, improved the jam pool by removing themselves from it. Apple Logo Evolution Apple has one of the most iconic logos of all time, but it wasn't always this way. A lot of people don't know that this was the first Apple logo, being completely different to the one we now know. Then, you have the classic rainbow colored logo, and then, just variations of the logo according to their respective eras. U2 Removal Tool I remember this one, it was kind of hilarious to me. Well, it turns out that the Irish rock band U2 partner with Apple, releasing their album Songs of Innocence for free, but in the most annoying way possible, as it wasn't just listed as free on iTunes, but rather the album was automatically added to all accounts without asking for permission, causing a lot of people to be confused 
and bothered by those. I was one of them. But I have to admit that I did end up listening to some seconds of some songs by mistake. People were so annoyed by this and by the fact that it couldn't be removed easily that Apple had to release a U2 removal tool <laughs> that would get rid of the album, but you wouldn't be able to re-download it again for free. I didn't know about this, so probably my iTunes account still has that album. Tier 3 Villains never use iPhones. If you watch a lot of movies or series, then you probably have noticed the pattern. All the good guys use iPhones and the bad guys use Android ones. It is believed that Apple pays studios or just plain forces them to make this happen. And in most cases, this is true. Like, I remember this was a spoiler for me when watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier because Sharon used an Android phone, but I think that in the Hawkeye series everyone used Pixels, so it's not always the case. Samsung makes Apple's displays. Yes, just in case that you didn't know. It's a good decision in my opinion as Samsung makes good panels, but also for the iPhones, Apple doesn't manufacture their 5G modems, which are made by Qualcomm. Apple leaks. Every year, iPhones get leaked. And not only iPhones, but also a lot of other Apple products like iPads and Macs. Even when Tim Cook tries really hard to get rid of the leaks, they always come up and with a very good accuracy, leaking almost everything. At least on the software side, I haven't seen many Apple leaks recently, so they probably improved that. A very iconic leak happened when an Apple employee forgot an iPhone 4 prototype, and it somehow got to the hands of a Gizmodo editor, who took pictures of the device and published an exclusive article about it. Police raided his house and took the prototype. Some rumored Apple products are the self-driving Apple car, a foldable MacBook and iPad, and a mixed reality headset. Apple Malware I'm going to make a standalone video about this because it's pretty interesting. You never really hear about viruses for eye devices. Probably you already know about the spyware Pegasus, so I'm going to skip that one. You've definitely encountered this one. A fake pop-up claiming that you have malware and asking you to take action to remove it. And once you do, the actual virus starts to work or it redirects you to download some sketchy app to get rid of it. To me, it's very obvious that these are fake, as even when they tried to replicate the pop-up very closely, they missed some details like the icons not being aligned properly, and Apple usually doesn't type everything in uppercase. <laughs> There are some variations where an actual system pop-up is displayed through an alert requested by the website. These tend to be displayed in websites with tons of ads. Like when you try to download a file or a mod, but it's hosted by Adfly. Another similar one tells you to enable notifications or sync your calendar app with one filled with ads to be able to download the file and keep sending you spam without the need of actually downloading or running any application, as technically this permission is working as expected. To get rid of these, you can disable notifications or remove the calendar and prevent this from happening on iOS by using an app blocker. Another type of very smart malware is the one where someone sends you a character, and for different reasons, like overloading the memory while trying to decode it, it causes your phone to reboot, and in some instances, it gets caught in a boot loop. So if you see that messages like these are getting popular, don't open them and update as fast as you can. Icons and emojis with Easter eggs. 
Apple loves to hide easter eggs. A good example of this is when they include ones in their icons, like the open book emoji on iOS, that when looking closely, you can notice it has a quote said by Steve Jobs, or the calendar icon in macOS shows the date when this app itself was announced. The funniest for me is this icon in macOS that represents Windows PCs showing a blue screen of death, an accurate representation as I've had like three of these in this month. Unknown Apple Products there are a ton of unknown Apple products, probably the one that you have heard of is the Apple Newton, which tried to be like an iPod the decades before the tech was there, so it was expensive and the handwriting recognition wasn't the best. Before the iPhone, there was the iTunes phone, aka the Rocker. It had a 0.3 megapixel camera and stored music on a micro SD card, but had a 100 songs limit and the following version of iTunes removed support for this phone. Similar to the previously mentioned device, this next one was born when Apple partnered with HP to make HP iPods. This happened because Apple needed more retail channels than they had and HP could sell them as if they were their own products. Another one is the iPod socks that protect your iPod from damage, the laser grinder, Apple's printer, the pip pen, Apple's console, quick take, a camera, the Macintosh TV that can Combine the mentioned products and Apple's clothing line. FaceTime intended to be an open standard. When this software was announced, it was intended to be an open standard, but it became too good and Apple decided to keep it as an iDevices exclusive feature. However, recently FaceTime now started to support Android and Windows to an extent. There is no app for these platforms, so you can only answer calls from the web browser. It's still a proprietary application and is half-baked for other platforms, so I will not call it an open standard. Why the I? The first device to use the I prefix was the iMac. Originally, it was going to be called the MacMan, but according to Ars Technica, the idea came from Ken Sagal, who proposed the name. Jobs initially didn't like it, but then he liked it enough for it to become the final name. The I stands for internet, but also for individuality and innovation. This was later adopted for other products. Samsung iTest. By visiting trigalaxy.com, you will be able to test a demo of how the UI of a Samsung phone works, making it easier for people interested to switch to a Samsung phone. A pretty clever strategy. Mac Gaming. Have you tried gaming on a Mac? Well, it's possible, but it's usually not a good experience due to Apple rarely having hardware dedicated to it, like external graphics cards or the default peripherals that Macs come with seem to be a pain to use when gaming, like the magic keyboard and the mouse, and mainly due to the few amount of native games available for this platform. Yes, it has better support for native titles compared to Linux because of the bigger market share, but for for the ones that don't support it natively, that's when you will find an issue and where Linux takes the spot as the second best desktop OS for gaming. You'll see. Apple is very restrictive with the graphics APIs that they want to support for the Macs. They want everyone to use Metal, their own API that, to be fair, almost none of the games are made with. As game companies prefer using something like DirectX, Vulkan, or OpenGL, this means that they probably would have to make a good rewrite of the game using Metal, and nobody wants to do that for a platform that, well, does have good market share isn't thought of as a gaming platform. Yeah, but they could just use Wine, right? Like on Linux. Yeah, they could and it works on some instances.
devices, but support for newer devices is getting trickier as the code would have to pass through several translation layers in the case of the Apple M SOCs. And again, they make it harder because Proton doesn't use metal, it uses Vulkan. The best way of gaming on a Mac is by ironically virtualizing Windows or by running iOS games, where they do have a great catalog with Apple Arcade. But you won't find your GTA 5s or Call of Duties here. I could probably make this entry a standalone video with more in-depth research, but I don't know, comment what you think about it. Tier 4 Apple Hoaxes when iOS 7 was released, fake ads promoting a new waterproofing feature appeared, fooling a lot of people. <laughs> but they raised the stakes by adding another fake ad, saying that thanks to AirDrop, you could drop your phone, the sensor would detect it and switch important components off, as well as vibrating the phone enough for it to land face up, protecting the screen. <laughs> when iOS 8 released, they repeated the formula and stated that if you microwaved your phone, it would absorb the energy and get charged. Of course, don't try any of these, they are all fake, and the last one can even be dangerous as your phone will explode. Apple Design Eras I'm going to quote a very good channel called Undefined that I've seen it's getting more recognition and they deserve it. I'll summarize their video but you'll have it in the top right corner in case you want to watch it. This user proposes 5 eras of Apple design, starting in 2000 to 2006 with the Aqua era that gets its name from its glossy, water-like look, being used at its fullest in macOS versions until Tiger and for the iMacs themselves. From 2008 to 2013, we have the Eskimorphic era, probably the most iconic one, and the one a lot of us grew up with. It uses textures that have depth and a more complex design, similar to objects from the real life. iOS used that until the release of its seventh major version. After Jobs' death, a new era starts from 2013 to 2017 that uses bright and saturated colors, simplified thin icons, and some blur. iOS is the best representation of this new era. 2017 would see the dawn of a new era that would not end until 2020, called the No-Nonsense Era or the Ecosystem Era. You can guess by the name that it had a lot of new products like AirPods, the HomePod, the Apple Pencil, and iOS 11 that followed a similar design to iOS 10 but with bolder text and icons making it easier to see stuff. In 2020, we saw what in my opinion is one of the best eras, simply named the current era, bringing back the best elements from the previous eras, like colored iMacs and iPhones, flat sides, neomorphism and macOS, which to be honest, I want more companies adopting this, SOCs made by Apple, and more customization. Bootcamp Bootcamp is the macOS utility that lets you dual boot macOS and Windows. Unfortunately, it only works for Intel-based Macs, as Windows for ARM kinda sucks and Apple never really provided support for it. Bootcamp doesn't install Linux distros, but people have been able to dual boot Linux on Apple Silicon Macs with a special distribution called Asahi Linux. It is pretty impressive what the open source community can achieve even without any documentation. I think recently GPU acceleration support was added, opening a lot of possibilities like probably gaming, even though keep in mind that it is still in development. But at least for Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, it is good enough for him, making him switch to an Apple Silicon Mac, installing this distro on it and compiling one of the latest versions of the Linux kernel from it. Goo Phone 
This is a company that creates iPhone clones, copying the hardware and the software. According to Amazon, the Google Phone 13 Pro Max runs Android 10, has a 6.7 inches display, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 512 gigabytes of storage, powered by a Dimensity 810. I really doubt the memory specs, but well. <laughs> iPod games. This refers not to third-party games that you can install on an iPod Touch via the App Store, but to the games that were pre-installed on the original Clickwheel iPod, like Breakout, a game that actually was invented by the co-founder of Apple, Steve Wozniak. Later revisions of the iPod added Parachute, Solitaire, and Music Quest. Xcode it's the IDE used to develop native software for iOS, macOS, iPadOS, watchOS, and tvOS. It is only available for macOS, so to make a native app for these platforms, you have to get a Mac. Also, to publish apps on the App Store, you have to pay a $100 yearly subscription. Pretty expensive, if you ask me. Kernel Panic this is a safety measure in Unix-like systems such as Linux, macOS, iOS, Android, etc. that appears when a fatal error occurs, similar to the blue screen of death from Windows. Some causes for this can be hardware failure, not being able to find the root file system, or a bug on the operating system. To be honest, I've never encountered any kernel panic. I think it's probably pretty rare due to Unix's stable nature appearing only when you're messing around with critical stuff. Apple Internal Apps this is going to become a video of its own, and it's probably going to be one of the first ones to be released in 2023, as there are a ton of Apple internal apps. But I'm going to quickly mention the most interesting ones. The most important one is Apple Connect, that lets workers sign into the company's network, which stores information for employees, as well as their permissions. Interestingly, this app uses a gesture-based password, thing that Apple never added to iOS probably due to not being secure enough. You install these apps with Switchboard, that is some sort of internal app store. Keep in mind that it's only used by people who work on Apple and getting a copy of this is not legal. By the way, this information is only for educational purposes, but still, because of the secrecy, it is believed that most of these apps have been discontinued. Brave lets Apple employees change the voice of Siri with proper properties like voice, gender, name, type, and more. Radar is used to report bugs with a high amount of importance, and text edit for iOS, it's like the Mac app, but for the mobile platform. Weird iTunes Facts Barely anyone uses iTunes today as it has been replaced with Apple Music, but there are a couple of interesting and weird facts about iTunes, starting with the terms of service that state, quote, you also agree that you will not use these products for any purposes prohibited by United States law, including without limitation the development, design, manufacture, or production of nuclear, missile, or chemical or biological weapons. The second weird fact is that for one version, iTunes had this abomination, vertical traffic lights. In the mini version of this window, it makes sense, but in a normal window, it really looks bad. And in a window with title bar, it looks worse. And what powers iTunes is pretty old, as it was made with web objects, a technology from 26 years ago made by Next, and then acquired and maintained by Apple. Claire is the dog cow. For the original Macintosh, a font was developed called Cairo, but this one had icons instead of text characters. The icon for the letter Z was this one, an animal that looked like a dog, but also like a cow. Then it was named Clara's the Dog Cow, being displayed in other parts of documentation and software, even though it's a little bit hard to find her nowadays. Tier 5 
removal of software features. When Apple removes stuff like the headphone jack or the charger, people get outraged. But I've noticed that when they remove software features, barely anyone notices. <laughs> For example, rotating the home screen on an iPhone was possible. It adapted itself well to landscape mode, but this is not the case anymore at least for iPhones that have notches, as rotating the screen would look weird, I guess? But another reason could be that widgets make it harder for the home screen to rotate. Even though that is not completely the case, as in iPadOS, you can rotate the screen with widgets. Probably I will unlock a little bit of nostalgia for some of you if I show you these forgotten apps, Newsstand and Game Center. A lot of people got confused with Newsstand as it wasn't just an app, but more like a custom folder where you had all your magazines, books, and news. Originally, you couldn't move Newsstand into another folder because, well, it was a folder itself, <laughs> but later that was enabled. It was confusing for a lot of us and because I never bought anything, I always had that section empty. It was replaced with Apple News and iOS 9 though. But one that had more functionality was the Game Center. This app showed you the leaderboards and achievements for games, allowed you to add friends, play with them and more stuff. It was removed in iOS 10 but returned in iOS 14. Sherlock's Park Park, standing for Palo Alto Research Center, is a division of Sherox mainly focused on experimenting with new stuff. The legend says that Jobs visited this place and saw the potential of the graphical user interface copying it and implementing it on the Apple Lisa and later for the Mac. The stuff developed by the chats in this place was really innovative and very ahead of its time. Here, the laser printers bit map graphics, GUI, Ethernet, object-oriented programming, and more were invented. Sadly, this company was never really successful and struggled to find a way to capitalize on their achievements, thing that companies like Microsoft and Apple took advantage of. Modded Apple Products a lot of people argue that Macs should be touch and this is what the modbook tried to achieve. As the name suggests, this was a modded Macbook that ran OS X and had a touchscreen and a pencil, being more like a tablet. The first versions were sold, but after raising funds through a Kickstarter campaign, the company just disappeared, the least suspicious Kickstarter campaign. It seems like it was a common practice back in the day to install iPod Linux on Clip wheel iPods. This showed you an iPod-like UI with expected features like video and audio playback, but also with some extra ones like games, emulators, and even a freaking terminal. <laughs> a Mac Rumors forums user by the name of Hacker Wayne made a post showing his achievement. He installed OS X Snow Leopard on the first generation Apple TV. I know that you're asking yourself, why? and he said that it was because he wanted to use the Apple TV as an iTunes streaming server. Another big mod took place in 2021 when engineering student Ken Pillanel made an iPhone with USB-C. This took a lot of effort as he had to reverse engineer the Lightning controller and perform some other amazing stuff. I recommend you to watch his video. The prototype was sold on eBay at approximately $5,000. Finally, a pretty amazing mod that not a lot of you know about is the secret iPod. This was made by an Apple engineer as a request from a defense contractor of the US Department of Energy. They wanted to add custom hardware to an iPod to be able to record data from its disk in a way that couldn't be easily detected. The author gives us some interesting details, like letting us know that the classic iPod OS wasn't based on Darwin. He created a hidden partition to store the data in. He thinks that they were making some sort of a stealthy geyser counter that is a device that measures ionizing radiation. Probably they wanted to get the data without alarming anyone, which is kind of alarming in itself. <laughs> iPhones have Ethernet MAC addresses. 
I've never met anyone that connects their phone to the internet via Ethernet, as we usually connect them via Wi-Fi, but if you wanted to have all the benefits that a wired connection has, starting with iOS 10.2, you can now connect your iPhone with a Lightning to Ethernet adapter directly to your router. I think this makes more sense in Android, as there are TV boxes, x86 distros, and Android TVs, but I guess it's fine to have the option on iOS too. Steve Jobs tried to hire Linus Torvalds. Around 2000, when Apple was working on the new Mac OS X, Steve Jobs met Linus Torvalds and tried to hire him, proposing to make Unix available for the biggest user base, but with the condition of stopping with the development of Linux, Linus refused. Besides, he hated Mac OS X's match kernel. Mac servers. If you know about servers, when installing an OS, you would most likely pick Linux or any BSD due to great security and being free as in price as well as in freedom. If you don't know that much about servers or Linux, you probably would commit the atrocity of installing Windows Server on a machine. But if macOS is a type of BSD, why is it not that popular for servers? Actually, there have been server dedicated versions of macOS, but it seems to not not have been that popular, probably due to high price and lack of upgradability on their Macs. Also, features of these versions were already bundled in the standard macOS, so it didn't make much sense to still have the server version, being discontinued in April of 2022. Apple Prototypes before the final iPhone UI that we all know, there was this prototype called Acorn OS. This was very similar to the iPod's interface, including a click wheel, but everything was touch. Another prototype was this one, a flip phone in 1983 and a tablet-laptop hybrid. Apple Internal Apple Internal is a folder that rarely appears after restoring a Mac running Catalina from a Time Machine backup, and it seems to be most of the times empty. It is believed that this folder contains tools for Xcode that aren't released to the public, that once Xcode detects it, enables hidden features. Knowledge Navigator this is an Apple commercial from the 80s that showed a concept of how this company thought technology would be like in the future. They got a lot of things right, like touch tablets, virtual assistants, and video calls. Hexley some operating systems have their own mascots, Linux has Tux, Android has Bugdroid, and FreeBSD has BST. Following this trend, Darwin, the OS Apple systems are based on, has Hexley the Platypus as its mascot, designed by John Hooper when the developers decided to have a platypus mascot. It was named after Darwin's assistant, who was supposedly called Hexley. Siri, where can I hide a dead body? If you asked this to Siri, it would actually tell you where you can hide it, from places like dumps and swamps to mines. Nowadays, seems like this was removed, replying, I used to know the answer to this. I phobia. This is a hypothetical phobia towards eye devices and or people that use them. The causes could be nightmares about iPhones or being hurt by a user of one of these. Abandoned Apple Stores some Apple stores, mainly unofficial ones, have been abandoned, leading to some interesting pictures with empty stores and being in an unmaintained state. Rumored factory errors on purpose. 
This is a theory that states that some products made by Apple and probably other tech companies too are made defective on purpose to make you spend money on repairing it on an Apple store or by buying a new one. I think it's likely as companies like Nintendo, for example, has known that their Joy-Cons are defective and will get drift eventually, but they never really tried to fix that problem as far as I know. Probably the biggest counter argument for this theory is that even if they are defective, they have warranty so you wouldn't have to pay again. Baby Shaker Baby Shaker was a lost iOS app that appeared on the App Store on April 20th, 2009, around the same time of the Shaken Baby Syndrome Awareness Week. The game had a picture of a baby and you had to shake the phone really hard, which caused the baby to, well, let's say disappear. People got outraged and the app was removed from the App Store. A successful re-upload happened the next day but again was taken down and now permanently. Steve Jobs' Behavior it is known that he had a pretty intense behavior sometimes, like when the time he didn't want to recognize that he was the father of his daughter and treating his best friend, Steve Wozniak, as a tool. Touch ID does not work with calls. According to former Apple employee Timothy McSwain, Touch ID is capable of detecting if a person is alive by checking if there's a capacitive signal coming from your finger. Unless the person has died recently, you'd have to pass electrical current through their body to make Touch ID detected. Still, this is a pretty morbid topic. iMessage is the deadliest software. Causing car crashes and in some instances infidelities that end up really bad, it makes iMessage likely one of the deadliest pieces of software ever made. Poor Working Conditions One of the reasons Apple has factories in China is because they can exploit workers more, leading to bad working conditions like employees working more hours than they should causing accidents, bad mental health, and even eating rotten food in rat-filled dorms. Unfortunately, there is not a lot we can do other than refusing to buy their products. Steve Jobs' Real Cause of Death Take this with a grain of salt, but WikiLeaks, a non-profit organization that publishes classified media, which in some cases has turned out to be real, published in 2019 that the real cause of Steve Jobs' death could have been AIDS and not cancer. I don't know, the decision to believe this is yours. This was an interesting ride. If you watched all the way until the end, I don't know how to thank you. If you want to keep going down the rabbit hole, more specifically a tech iceberg's rabbit hole, I invite you to watch the operating system's iceberg, the culmination of all my icebergs until now, including corrections, a new organization, more information, and exclusive entries. It should probably be out at the same time as this video comes out, or at worst, some days later. Probably the next one could be the AI iceberg, as we're finished now with operating systems. Also, remember that my sources are in the description below, and you're free to react to this video as long as you give credit. Goodbye, see you in the next one.